today we're going to dig a little bit deeper into Beat Detective. So we're going to be using Beat Detective to analyze a clip, to detect beat triggers, to separate the clip on the detected triggers, and to conform the separated clips to the session tempo. So kind of a lot of things for Beat Detective to do. 80% of the time when I'm using Beat Detective, I've got some piece of music, and it's usually a multi-channel or multi-track drum situation where I've tracked the drums on maybe eight different mics, and I'm trying to quantize uh, <clears throat> those parts of the drum kit so that they fit really tightly or cleanly into the rest of the music. Uh, but in this case, we're actually going to take a piece of music that was recorded at a faster tempo than what we have here with our session. So not only are we going to quantize the drums if you will it's a beatbox actually but we're also going to uh, affect a change in tempo uh, which we sometimes call tempo matching or beat matching let's get started here so you can see here that i've got this atom beatbox groove up here in the clips list i'm going to bring that down to this beatbox track right now and you're going to notice that it does not adhere cleanly to this grid because it was recorded at a different tempo than the rest of the session that's here right now uh, that said, let's listen to what this session sounds like without this beatbox. Yeah, kind of funky little 16th note rock thing with a shaker. So I'm going to create a click track now. Hopefully you can see the timings matching up with the session clock there. But uh, just to keep us honest, I am going to create a click track now. It's solo safed. So everything's locked in real tight. So this session was obviously recorded at a tempo of 91.7191 beats per minute. Um, and if we listen to this beat track next, we'll hear that that was not the case with this. This is recorded in a different session. So let's listen to the beats with a click. So you can hear, obviously, that that was recorded at a much faster tempo. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Beat Detective, again, to beat match and also to conform the audio. And when I say conform, it means that we're going to slice up this audio into little pieces so that it is quantized because it's really not the cleanest vocal recording. Let's listen to it one more time and just listening for the um, sort of inaccurate timing of the beatboxer. <laughs> So it's not really terrible, um, but we can make it a lot more perfect than that, which is what we're going to do. So first thing I'd like to do, and I mentioned this in the other video, is to create what I sometimes call a safety. So we're going to leave this soloed, and I'm also going to go to the playlist selector here, and I'm going to go to duplicate. And here, um, I could either make this the destination or the original, if you will. Um, so let's go ahead and just call this the original. Um, so I've still got that there. In other words, you know, if I had to, I could always go back to the clips list. No big deal. But it's really convenient for me just to be able to switch from here. Much more convenient than it is for me to have to go all the way to the clips list and drag clips in. All right, so let's switch to our alternate playlist, which is the one that we're going to be using Beat Detective on. This is Beatbox 1, all right? And, uh, you know, I could even rename this one. So we'll call this BD, just so we know which one that is. All right. So right now, those two playlists would look exactly the same, but not for long. Notice that in the timeline here, we've got just slightly over four bars here in this session. Um, however, this actually is four measures worth of material, this beatbox loop, in other words. So what we need to do is we need to do the beat matching that I just told you about. Um, and by the way, when you're doing this work with Beat Detective, you're going to want to have the track as big as possible. So I sometimes just call it Explode or E, which does this, which is Zoom Toggle for us. So I'll push E and that'll make things a little bit more visible there. And I'm probably going to want to shut of that clips list as, as necessary also. And I might use the T and R keys. I might also use my um, Zoom preset keys. It looks like three is really close to explode, right? Four, there's three, there's two. Okay, so something around three or just a Zoom toggle E will take care of us. All right, so there's some ways to resize the track for you. Uh, and let's go ahead and um, define a selection in Beat Detective. So what we do here, 
Uh, you'll notice right now, by the way, that my link timeline and edit selection is turned on. When we're in Beat Detective, we're generally going to want to have that turned off, which is a little bit strange for us because 90% of the time we've got it turned on. So at some point we'll make that adjustment, but for now I'm just going to make the selection here. I selected my clip here. I could use a grabber tool. I've just double clicked with the selector tool. And now I'm going to open up the Beat Detective function. So from my menu at the top, um, I could go to event or I could use the shortcut which is command and eight on the keypad. So that opens up this guy and there's quite a few little sub dialogues here in this box. And nine times out of ten the first thing that I would do would be this, a clip separation. Um, we also need to analyze this audio. So um, another quick tip for you guys is when you're working with Beat Detective you'll notice here that it's generated all these beat markers or triggers automatically. Um, I'm going to bring this all the way down and I'm just going to show you a trick which is it's half speed playback. So if I hold down the shift button and hit space bar then we'll get this. might be wondering why is he doing that seems kind of silly um, but when you're having to in some cases create those beat triggers you saw them the purple lines it's a really nice thing to be able to slow this down to say hey you know that actually was a 16th note subdivision or no that was just you know some something erroneous in the audio and we'll see what's what in just a minute here so let's go ahead and um, we're going to do a few things we're going to we've got our beat detective open here and um, again, we could do that from the event menu. We're going to select um, clip separation here with this radio button. And we're going to set the start to 1 and the end at 5. Now that's been done for us. But the reason I point that out is if we do this, which is a capture selection, which is what I do in the, using this beat detective probably 90% of the time, it's going to tell us how much actual time is occupied by this clip which we don't want right now, okay? So I can't use capture selection. Instead, I have to either hope that it will just turn this into five, which it did not. So that being said, I want this material to cover from measure one, beat one, all the way up until bar five. Again, this is four measures of material that was recorded. So I'm gonna type in five. And now Beat Detective has that information. All right, so let's go ahead and um, analyze now. So we're going to analyze this, making sure that the proper subdivision is set up for us. It's 16th note oriented material. So we want to make sure that that is set. Okay, we don't need the triplets. It's not a swingy thing. Um, so again, our most commonly used resolution for analysis is enhanced. If you've got a kick drum that you're trying to refer back to, you might use low emphasis. Hi-hat would be an obvious choice for high emphasis. Enhanced resolution, we click analyze, and it's analyzed it. You just don't see anything yet because we haven't dragged up our threshold slider, as I called it the other day, which is a sensitivity slider here. And as you can see, as I do this slowly, you can see these beat triggers. Uh, that's those purple lines. What we don't want to do is go too far with this. If we go too far, then we get what are called false triggers. We can move them, we can remove them, but it's better if we just kind of get it right the first time. So knowing the session as I do, I know that a setting of about 23% is good. You know, again, if I go crazy here, you're going to start getting false triggers. You know, you're going to get stuff like right here and um, oh, other parts, you know, in between transients and dead space that where there's nothing going on. Okay. So we're analyzing the sub beats or 16th notes here, but again, I know that I can bring this back to 23 and I've got about 90% of my material covered. Let's go ahead and we're going to add um, a few beat triggers in here. I'm going to add them in right now. What's the click in there? Okay, so maybe you heard right here um, that there's actually something going on. So I need my grabber tool at this point. And I'm just going to click right there. And now I've got this purple line. Okay, these are the beat triggers. And I can move that if I want to. But I kind of want that to be right on the transient. 
Okay, these are also going to be subdivisions of the beat. Okay, and it could just be that he wasn't using um, as heavy of a articulation there. But again, this is a really good place for you to use that half tempo, so shift space. Yeah, so obviously right here he's doing a again. So I'm going to click there. And here's one big one that it missed somehow. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and insert one there. And I'm doing that, I'm doing the insertion just by clicking. I could remove these, by the way, by holding down the option key, and then the hand has a minus symbol next to it. It's kind of like when you're removing stuff up above in the rulers. So that's removing it, clicking it just adds one there, and then I can move them around. Um, although sometimes it's not a really great idea because they'll do weird things like you just saw there. So let's see how things are going. You can also sh display the temp trigger time, which means the subdivisions in this case are uh, 16th note subdivisions. So zero for the downbeat, um, 240, 480, 720, uh, and so on. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, here's another one that I missed. And so that we don't have to go all the way back again, which is a pain, this is a place where I really like to use dynamic transport. So I come up to the top here and I'm going to go to my options. Um, dynamic transport is turned on right now, but I just wanted to show that to you guys again. Notice up here we've got this little blue triangle. And so now, and without having to lose my entire selection, I'm going to go into slip mode for this. See that? So I can play back from any place in the session without having to lose my selection. And that's another reason, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that there's this timeline and edit selection that we generally want to leave off when we're dealing with Beat Detective. If you leave it on and you come up and you try to start um, a new place for playback, so I'm going to disable my dynamic transport to demonstrate this point. Um, the problem is a lot of the time you end up, you see what just happened? I clicked up here to get my playhead, and I lost my whole selection, okay? Now, it's not like I really lost anything. You can see that all those uh, beat triggers are still there again, um, which is great. But it's kind of a pain if you're having to work through this. So, again, I would recommend leaving this turned off nine times out of ten. And if you're having, if it's weirding you out at all, then, you know, you turn it back on. So I'm going to leave it off for now, listen to some of this remaining material, and I just lost my... My dynamic transport I think that's the easiest way to go okay so shift space slow half speed playback All right yeah I think we're in good shape here we're gonna chop this up here in just a second and we're gonna separate the selection and conform it so let's um, make sure that the trigger pad is set anywhere between three and five is generally a good setting for that. So we'll leave it set at five. And what that's saying is it's saying, yeah, we're going to cut up the audio, but there's going to be a pad or a bit of space, a buffer, if you will, um, five milliseconds before the transient, or in this case, the, the beat trigger. Okay. Again, bad beat triggers, uh, which are not related to the music at all, are what we call false triggers. We want to avoid those. We can remove them if we have to. We've got our five millisecond here, and we've got clip separation enabled here. We're just going to hit separate now. And if you look there, you'll see that we now have several distinct clips. Okay, so now we're going to conform them and essentially quantize the audio. So these clips are all selected. Um, and then we're going to go to, under operation here, we're going to go to clip conform. I'm just going to leave this set to standard, and we're going to not worry about any of these things right now. And then I'm going to hit conform. Yeah, and so what you can see now is you can see that the audio is shifted. Okay, each one of those clips is shifted in such a way that it now matches the tempo of what's going on in this session. Let's listen.
Yeah, and it's a much better performance now because we've also essentially quantized at the 16th note level. You'll notice here that these clips start, you know, the selection starts at one and it goes to the end here. Um, and then we've got this last little business here at the end. And now this beatbox recording occupies four full measures um, worth of time here. If I had any smoothing that I needed to do, I don't really have to here, but I might want to draw some little crossfades um, going from one clip to the next. It's not a problem. This material is very percussive and it's been separated enough that we don't really have to do this. Um, but that, as I mentioned before, is a really useful function. I mean, I could just go ahead and smooth right now. And now you can see what's happened is it's also, it's drawn in all these, these crossfades, okay? So again, I don't need that right now. Um, let's go ahead and group this. So I want to make sure that I've selected everything. Uh, I can do it with Beat Detective, so Command-8 on the keypad there. Um, and then actually it might be nice for us to sort of zoom in or out using 3 or 4. Okay, and then we're going to just go ahead and group all this right now. Um, so I'm going to go up to Clip Group. And yep. There you can see it. And again, you know, if I wanted to at this point, you know, if I wanted to go back to that other version, I go, oh, you know, I want to see what that was like. There it is, right? We've still got that old version there. Well, that's more or less it. Uh, let's see how this works together with the rest of the session now. Beatbox. So it's, it's perfect now with that groove. Uh, we could loop it if we wanted to. So I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit. And I want to show you what does happen sometimes when we're doing this work. This is this tiny little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of extra here. So I'm going to get my standard trim tool, not the loop tool yet. I'm going to kick into grid mode, and I'm going to just get rid of that offset. I've blown off that offset. Okay. And so now if I wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and hit option R for repeats. Uh, I could repeat this out as long as I wanted to, let's say eight times. If I did not get rid of that little bit of extra there, I'd have a slight bit of offset coming into every bit of loop that might eventually add up um, to make it unusable as a loop. So let's hear what happens. I'm going to start in using dynamic transport right at the end of this original. So perfect. Alright, so that's it. So hopefully you've got a little bit of an idea about the following. Analyzing a clip using Beat Detective, separating that clip on detected beat triggers, the purple lines, conforming the separated clips to the session tempo, and creating a clip group from the conformed clips, which we then looped.